All right, so NAR finally settled this lawsuit. You know, for a long time, they said they were going to continue to fight it. But, you know, when the insurance money runs out, at some point, they got they have to make a decision on what they're going to do. And so I have been getting absolutely blown up by people saying, hey, what do you think this means? Uh, what are the implications? What are the impacts this will have on the real estate industry? Do you think that this is the end for real estate agents? I mean, getting all these questions, Ben. And so I want to, I mean, this is obviously some massive, massive news. It has uh, potential major impacts on how this industry moves forward. And so I want to really, in today's episode, talk through all the potential implications. And then I want to give my thoughts and my opinion on what I believe things will look like in this new landscape. And before we do that, I first want to get really clear on the proposed settlement that NAR uh, has put out there, just to make sure that we're all on the same page, right? So let's do that first. And so I'm going to share my screen. And because it's really critical that we have clarity on this conversation today, and that the audience understands exactly what's happening. So this is the this is right on NAR's website, right? So this is what they're calling their practice changes. And so here's a couple of the key takeaways. They said, we were able to retain the right of consumers to continue to have uh, cooperative compensation as an option so long as they pursue it off the MLS through negotiation and consultation with real estate professionals. We'll talk about that. That's number one. Number two, NAR has agreed to put in place a new rule prohibiting any offers of compensation on the MLS. They believe that this change will go into effect mid-July 2024. And they, they go on to say that there will continue to be many ways in which buyer brokers could be compensated, including through offers of comp uh, compensation communicated off the MLS. And they can also communicate that through the submission of offers and the negotiation between two agents, kind of like commercial does. And so they talk about um, ways in which you can do that, but we'll talk about that in just a second. And then they have implications for home buyers and sellers. And then lastly, the, the other big one is that there's a new rule about written agreements. And so it says that NAR has long encouraged its members to use written agreements because they help consumers understand exactly what services and value will be provided and for how much. So this settlement uh, provides that MLS participants working with buyers must enter into a written representation with those buyers. They also, uh, in the settlement agreement, says that it has to be in place before a showing has, uh, has happened. And we've been talking about this for years and years and years. The fact that you should be listing buyers the same way you list a seller with a contract in place where compensation is clear, it is not vague, we know exactly what services are going to be uh, had. So now, that's the landscape, that's the settlement. This is this is massive. Um, because up until this point, you get a listing, the seller pays X amount of commission, five, five and a half, six percent, and this whole suit is prohibiting now that with these listings, you cannot offer a commission inside the MLS. And so let's talk about what that actually means. So the first impact that I, I think that this will have, uh, or the first thing I want to discuss is this consumer awareness versus industry awareness. So mm. the industry, real estate people, brokers, owners, teams, agents are up in arms about this, right? People are rightfully so, very, 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 very worried about what's going to happen. But when I started to think about this, Ben, uh, something hit me in the last couple of days as I'm letting this digest, as I'm studying the settlement, I'm reading it five, six, seven times a day to make sure I understand it. Something really hit me. And that is that the consumer's awareness around real estate commissions is vague at best. It's vague at best. So what does that mean? What's the point? The point is, now that this, it looks like this settlement is going to go through once the courts approve it, and come mid-July, it isn't that the consumer's awareness around this all of a sudden 
you're going to be at an appointment. The consumer is going to say, okay, you know, commissions are cut in half. No more buy. They're not going to, most likely, they're not going to do that. Their awareness around how real estate commissions work today will be the same come mid-July, August, September. It will come down to our ability to communicate how real estate is done. And I, because there's a lot of positioning that the media is having around this settlement, like the days of 6% commission are going away, it's just going to be different. And I think there's some things that we're going to cover in, in today's episode that I hope will bring some agents a little bit of, for sure, clarity, but a little bit of The way I'm looking at this, hopefully, will will bring down their level of concern in the, in the way I'm looking at this. So when we meet with the consumer, the point is they don't know what they don't know right now. They don't know that I pay X percent, and of that percent, you use some of that to pay a buyer. We don't. They don't know that until you tell them, right? That's what this whole class action lawsuit was all about. And so in this new world, when you're communicating with a seller and you say, Mr. Seller, I charge X percent to sell the home. And there will be times when another agent has a client who would like to write an offer on your home. And they may write in that offer that they'd like to get compensated. I don't look at those worlds, Ben, that different than what's already happening today. So let me get your thoughts on this piece when we talk about consumer awareness, and then we'll get into some deeper implications. Yeah, I think when it's going to start coming up in conversation, the uh, industry agent or whatnot is is just really sensitive right now to it, where the consumer isn't super familiar with it. So they bring it up. You are you get defensive as an agent. It, it it's just in your head, right? Where <clears throat> if you've been doing this a long time. And somebody brings up, hey, will you list this for 1%? We all like kind of laugh, chuckle and answer it and move on. And honestly, if if they can't get past that, we just agree not to work together, right? Yeah. So um, just because this is so new and we're not sure how consumers are gonna approach this as in a potential objection, I think people are a little concerned because they just don't have a roadmap yet on what it's going to look like. Um, but I very much so believe it's just something that we're going to navigate differently and it's going to be business as usual. Um, as in homes have to keep selling. Yes, it might look different. It's a different process, but people that have the ability to take a listing are going to continue to equip themselves with the skills they need to service and communicate with that seller effectively. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. I think just the way in which uh, compensation for buyer agent services, the way we get to that will just be different. That's you right. know, and I had a whole nother video that I was going to post today on YouTube. And I said, and I just been thinking about this. It's just going to be different. It, it'll be mm -hmm. harder for some agents to solidify or justify their... Um, their worth to to a buyer client, then that world will be different. Again, we'll talk all about that in just a second. All right. So first, the first takeaway from this episode in this, I would call this address to the real estate industry is that the conversation with home sellers when it comes to listing and selling their property or, or buyer clients isn't going to be that different than what it already is today. Because again, you don't go into a listing appointment today where the, where the sellers know exactly how everything works. They don't understand how it works. Just the same, they're not going to understand how it works when you meet with somebody after these changes go into effect. So that's number one. Number two, let's talk about the true winners and losers of this settlement, because I think this is important. So the clear winners of this settlement is not the so-called harmed sellers that felt like they were over that they that their costs were overinflated hmm. the true winners is the plaintiff's attorneys and so yeah. the, the the interesting thing that i think that hasn't come up which i don't understand is there's a class action lawsuit all these people that feel like their costs were overinflated yet their attorneys are walking away with hundreds of millions of dollars 
and they're going to get pennies. And that situation to them, they can justify. You see, I hired this real estate agent and they charged me, you know, five and a half or 6% to sell my house. I walked away with all this money. I want to file this class action lawsuit because of that. But then I hire an attorney who's going to make hundreds of millions to my pennies, and I'm okay with that. Like, it's almost laughable when you think, okay, overinflated costs. The only winners of this case are the plaintiff's attorneys. These homeowners that are part of the class action, they're not, they're not uh, going to walk away with millions and millions and millions of dollars. They're going to walk away with pennies. It's super interesting. 100%. And so why is it that, I don't know, that, that, that part to me is just a little interesting. It's ironic when we talk about inflated cost. Yeah. I don't know. The agent who sold this house, maybe they t made 10, 15 grand. Your attorney's going to make 150, 180, 260 million. I don't know which one's more inflated. It's just interesting. The losers, you want to add something to that real quick? No, keep going. I'll okay. circle back. The losers of the settlement, however, and, and everything we're talking about is all speculation. I don't have a crystal ball. This is just our opinion. Uh, time will tell. But potentially could be buyers. Because yeah. if, if this goes in a, in a direction where either buyers are not willing to pay for buyer agent services out of their own pocket, which has never been tested, because this is not a... This is not a uh, argument around you know buyer agent value this is an argument around two things the plaintiff's argument was we're not arguing the value of a buyer's agent we're, we're arguing the fact that um it was like price fixing essentially in the mls you could just see most listings are at three percent that's what and they won so we're not going to debate that they won okay so they won um we're going to find out if a buyer is willing to pay for their agent out of their own pocket as a part of their closing costs when they purchase a home, and or if that's not the case, we're going to find out if buyers end up going directly to listing agents. This is another question we're going to talk about later in the episode. But potentially buyers going unrepresented. And this is the thing that I don't understand that the DOJ is missing. It's like, okay, we're going after the real estate industry with everything we've got because this is a you know, multi-billion trillion dollar industry and we want to uh, protect the consumer. Okay, well, the unintended consequence of this could be that you leave another class of people, the buyers of the house, unrepresented, going into millions of transactions with no legal representation. What is that going to look like? So buyers potentially could lose, right? The other real losers is the real estate industry. I mean, this could wreak ma uh, mass havoc on the industry. Certainly, I think that there's some reports saying as, as much as been a million realtors would, would leave the industry as a result of this. I don't know wow. if it's going to be quite that big, uh, but certainly we're going to lose hundreds of thousands of agents who maybe have this as maybe a part-time thing where they just work with a couple of buyers per year. And it's going to be tough for them to justify their value to get those clients that in the past didn't have to pay them out of pocket, right? They were getting mm -hmm. compensated from the seller. In this new landscape, they're going to have to justify that cost up front to Uncle Bob, to Aunt Sue. And they might say, well, do I have to pay that? Do I have any other options? And when they find out the other option is just to go directly to the listing agent for the house they want, and they don't have to pay you know, Cousin Johnny $15,000, We'll see what happens to people that are in this business part-time. I don't know. What I know is that a lot of people are going to struggle moving forward because buyer agent commissions are going to be so much more difficult to obtain that for some people that, that this isn't their full-time profession might have a hard time getting. That's all. Don't get mad. It just might be more difficult. It's a, professions, a professional's industry moving forward. And this industry is, is set to lose billions of dollars in revenue and lost revenue. We'll talk about all the ways that that's going to happen. And then what I think time will tell is, does this actually help the sellers? You see, the whole case is, well, now this is going to make buying and selling a home more affordable. Time will tell. We don't know. Mm -hmm. will, will we see some commission compression? 
Well, possibly, yeah, we will. But it's just going to be different. Instead of the seller paying all of the commission, whether that be 5%, 6%, whatever the case may be, maybe the sellers are paying a listing agent up front 3% to sell the house. But then somebody writes an offer and is asking for 2 2.5%. Is it this? Does it end up just being the same for the seller? Does it, you know, because, well, time will tell. And then will the exposure on these properties be the same? I've got tons to add around that. That's one of my biggest concerns about mm -hmm. what's going to happen to these MLSs and to these portals and all of that. Does the seller actually lose because they, the exposure they get on their properties today decreases as a result of this settlement? So, We'll see who the winners and losers are, okay? So that's just a quick little thing. Uh, let's get into like the nuance of this whole thing. Let's talk about buyers for a second. So here's the way I think about this new world of, of buyers. So one of the questions is, will buyers be willing to pay out of pocket for their agent's services? This is a huge question. Um that obviously nobody has the answers to. A lot of people can speculate and say, absolutely, uh, my clients would, would gladly do that, but we just we just don't know, right? And so I put out a poll uh, on the YouTube channel. I just want to share that really quick. And all of you guys thought it's a 90-10 split, right? We have almost a 1,000 of you that voted. And 90% say, no way. The buyers are going to go directly to listing agents. They would not be willing to pay out of their pocket. And 10% of you thought that your buyer clients would pay your commission out of pocket. That is yet to be determined. We just don't know what buyers would be willing to do. So this is the part I want to help agents, Ben, really relax about. Because it isn't that buyer agent commissions is going away. You just can't offer it inside of the MLS. So yeah. what, is the most, what is the more likely thing to happen is that buyer agent commission is just part of the offer negotiation process, just like it is in commercial real estate, right? So does that become part of a, uh, because the settlement was really clear. Sellers are allowed to offer a seller concession to go towards buyer closing cost. They can communicate that directly in the MLS. What cannot be communicated is how those funds uh, that those funds can't be directly used for buyer agent compensation, right? So that's the part that's being prohibited in the MLS. But we can still negotiate buyer agent commission with inside of an offer. And that's the part about being it different. It's not going away. So I want everybody to kind of relax and say, you know, um, that thinks, man, will, will realtors just become obsolete? No, it's just going to be different. So... That's one question around buyers. Another question around buyers is, if, if the new landscape is, okay, I hire listing agent Bob to sell my house, and instead of him charging me 6% or 5% or 7% or whatever, that that fee is less upfront, will sellers want or need to offer any concessions or commissions to sell their home? This is a big question I've been thinking about for the last couple of days. Will they even have the need to do that? If all the and this is already happening today, if if all the buyers as a result of this settlement end up just going directly to the listing agent, and that seller has two offers, Ben, one that has a buyer agent who's in their offer, let's just say the offers are very comparable, but in one offer, buyer agent X wants to get paid from the seller 3% or 2%. And then the other buyer has the same offer and they don't have an agent, they're unrepresented, yeah. what is the seller going to do, right? And this is just a question. I don't have a crystal ball. I'll pose a couple more of these. And I want to get your thoughts on this. Because again, the other question is, will buyers end up going directly to listing agents? We just don't know. Uh, and then certainly as a result, I think this will create a new hole in the industry for new business models to to come up left and right. And I've got a lot of different ideas on what I think could happen or different business models that could uh, present themselves. 
because of this new problem in, in, in the marketplace. And that problem being, again, that does buyer want to come out of pocket on top of all their closing costs, their down payments, which we know is already a struggle for, for most consumers right now. Do they want to come out of pocket and then pay for this service? We just don't know. So what are your thoughts on the implication for buyers? I think it ultimately you look at this as like, oh, the, the price of homes are going to come down, right? So it's good for them. But I, I think that's an illusion. So I, I, think, yeah, I, don't think, that, I don't think that's going to happen at all. The seller, he wants more. He doesn't want less, right? That's why this whole thing started, right? So I, I think for, for the buyer, they go unrepresented and it harms them in the long run um, just because they aren't a, a lot of times, they don't have the money to buy a home these days, let alone pay more on top of the home price to buy it, right? Yeah. Um, we've used the car industry as an example, but it, you know, maybe not the best, but you just think about somebody walking into a dealership to buy a car. He buys the car. Is he really going to pay a fee to have somebody represent him through that process? Right? No, I just don't, I don't see something like that happening. Yeah, I don't know. You know, I don't know. I know that if you're going to, well, uh, so here's some practical application for, for this industry moving forward. If you're going to represent a buyer, number one, it'll be mandated that you have a contract in place now. No more of the days right. where you could just show properties and hope you're going to get paid because it was easy. You know, your compensation was already fixed with inside the MLS. That's what this whole lawsuit is about. That is going away. Yeah. So if you're going to represent a buyer, you're going to have a compensation agreement in place. MLSs are already doing it. Boards are already doing it. Georgia's got a really good one. Um, and it's going to outline exactly how in which you are going to get compensated, right? And so it could be part of the negotiation or that buyer is going to have to come out of their pocket and you're going to have to list a buyer the same way you list a seller. You're going to have to have a buyer consultation. You're going to have no. to, you're going to have to demonstrate, uh, demonstrate a value proposition such that the buyer says, yes. I absolutely want you to, to represent me the same way an attorney would. And I'm going to sign this compensation agreement up front. And so that's the new landscape. I don't know, Ben, if um, I'm not, you know, again, I've been, it's taken me a couple of days to think through this. I don't think buyer agency is going to go away. I think there'll be a lot of consumers that continue to have representation. It's just how does that agent get to the place where they're getting compensated. Again, that's the only part that's going to be different. I just think that they're going to have a, a new document inside of all of our boards, all of our MLSs, and that when you write an offer, the offer is going to say something like, hey, subject to buyer agent compensation of X, Y, and Z. And it will be very, it could be, could be very similar to how it is today. Because again, the the compensation agreement that they have in place with their listing agent isn't the full five, six percent like it has been in the past. It might be two and a half or three and a half percent, right? Mm -hmm. And so, you, you know, when you start to think about this, you say, wow, it probably is just a, it could be a big nothing burger. It could be you just, instead of you going to a listing appointment and saying, hey, here's how this thing, this looks when you're presenting the numbers, I charge X percent to sell the house. Um, there's three ways the home can sell. You could find a buyer, I could find a buyer, another agent can find us the buyer. That still mm -hmm. holds true. Nothing yeah. of that changes. It's just the flow of money has changed. That's all. And so at, up front on a listing appointment, it's just, hey, this is what I charge for representing you in the sale of this home. It's very likely that an agent could write us an offer and that offer be subject to compensation. It's the same. You're ending up at the same place. So just do don't you, know what's going to happen. Go ahead. Do you think there's a world where you have kind of like tiers, kind of like you're talking about where it's like, hey, if if I help you, Brandon, buy something on the market, I'm just going to get a flat fee of X, right? Because I'm just going to really do the paperwork for you and kind of make sure nothing gets missed. But the next tier is, you know, if I can find you a property, then I get paid X, which ultimately makes you almost turn into a listing agent, right? Because yeah. when I work in it, go ahead. No, no. I mean, that's exactly, I think, that. what's going to happen. You know, when I look ahead and say, okay, 
there's going to be somebody who cracks the code and says, hey, this is a new way of doing real estate in this country, and it become the new standard. And that's one of the services that we'll get to later in the episode, but like this buyer concierge uh, offering, yeah. right? Um, and I think that's absolutely viable. You know, yeah, where- where inventory. That's right. Yeah, I'm bringing you off market inventory. Now it's just like a for sale by owner, right? It's the okay. same thing as selling a for sale by owner. You go to the for sale by owner and say, hey, I have a buyer client for you. For sale by owner says, cool, I'll pay you 3% if you bring me a buyer. It's the same. It's the same. Yeah. The only big difference here, this is why I wanted to reshoot this episode. And that is because um, the only difference is the offer of compensation in the MLS not being there. Like that little... Uh, that little input screen on the MLS where you put in what you're offering is going to be gone. Yeah. But I think everything else will be very similar. I don't, I was, I thought about this many different ways, but when I really think about what I just said, I just don't know how different it's going to be, uh, but time will tell. All right. So let's talk about sellers for a second. So I think that most likely that commission compression will happen that overall commission that sellers pay will go down. I believe that to be the case. However, they will still get the same level of service that they're getting today. So I think the sellers do win in uh, as a result of this. And there could be a world, where, like we talked about, where in many cases, sellers are driving the process because they don't have opposing representation negotiating against them. I think that the number of buyers going directly to listing agents will increase. And so obviously, we'll talk more about the listing agent, but no time is, is more important right now than honing your skills and becoming a listing agent. I mean, if you own the inventory, it, this has always been this way, but even more so now, owning the inventory is going to be extremely important because that's the only tangible value that we're bringing to the marketplace is the actual product itself, right? And so uh, I think for listing agents, they're, they'll be able to expand and grow their business. But for sellers specifically, I think that they will come out of this better than what they are today. You look at that differently at all? No, exactly okay. the same. All right, let's talk about agents for a second. Again, I think that naturally, um, we're already seeing this before the settlement, that hundreds of thousands of agents are leaving the business. It's just going to be, well, what I called it at the beginning of the episode, it is going to become a professional's industry. Mm -hmm. Right or wrong, good or bad, don't get mad at me. Um, I just think it's going to be a professional's business, a professional's industry, where it's full transparency. This is what the DOJ wants, is full transparency. There's no more vagueness around you know buyer agent uh services are free all that type of thing where all you had to do is open up a couple of doors and you get a fifteen thousand dollar check it's going to be very transparent your level of service needs to be articulated to the consumer it's transparent and there has to be a contract in place before you're allowed to even show a property in this new world mm -hmm. that's why i say it's a professional's industry you're going to have to have a world-class compelling buyer uh, consultation meeting with every client that you represent the same way any other professional would do the same way you would do if you're going to list a house. And that's why Ben, I think so many agents fall to working with buyers is again, the, I could just hear the audience getting so mad. Don't get mad. I'm just saying the truth. They have a hard time articulating their, their value tangibly to a consumer to get the consumer to, to agree up front. Yes, you are worth paying a lot of money to represent me in this transaction. That is a difficult thing for the for a large portion of the people that are in this business. And so they either have to change or they'll find themselves out of the business. I think that's reasonable, right? Uh, that's number one thing I think that's going to happen. The other thing is that we already know this, but agents are going to have to shift their practices uh, away from buyer lead generation to, to listing lead generation. That is going to have to be a must now. The days of you just buying leads off the internet and 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 uh, doing activities that would lead you to getting more buyers. Again, I think that buyer agency commission. I don't think that it just disappears off the planet. I just think it's going to be a more difficult path 
And so as a result of that, I think agents moving forward will really, really focus on getting the, their hands on the actual product itself so that they can control their destiny. Your thoughts on impact on agents? So the ability to market a listing right now, uh, I believe is easier because of all the companies that we know that are pushing it to get the buyer leads, right? With that going away, I think the listing agent, while they've always won uh, or, or had a leg up in this industry, they're gonna have to sharpen their skills too to make sure that they're truly marketing their property, right? Oh yeah. Because, because you don't have all these buyer's agents bringing you deals. So you need to make sure like you've got the skill to truly market, push your listing and really add value versus just putting a sign in the yard. Right. And throwing it in the MLS. Um, and, just, and, I'll talk, and I'll talk about a huge implication right. with what, what that looks like here in just a few minutes. I mean, that to me is going to be the biggest implication. Uh, I think that, yeah, they'll, they'll have a bigger challenge than agents potentially. We'll talk about that in a minute. Let's talk about teams. I think that teams are going to be disrupted like crazy. Why? Mm -hmm. Because most teams today depend on internet buyer lead generation as their primary feeder of recruiting agents to their team, keeping agents on their team, and keeping agents on their team busy. Well, listen, if buyer agent commissions are more rare or more scarce or harder to get, I think it's going to be difficult for, an, for a team leader to start this team, give company X their credit card, and buy these buyer leads because I think that people in the buyer lead business are going to be really struggling, really struggling. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about that later too. And so these teams are going to also have to shift to a listing-focused team. I think that the days of this buyer-heavy I think we kind of had it easy, you know, where you could buy some of these leads, open a couple of doors and your brand new agent who just started gets a, you know, $18,000 check, you know, uh, those yeah. days are going to be very, very scarce, very, very rare for that to happen uh, moving forward. Yeah, I, How I do you see, see it, it kind of more like the commercial industry where you've got to get in, get a job and really work your way up the ladder where you're making pennies your first couple of years um, until you kind of earn earn a little bit more of a corp. It's more of a corporate ladder is what it turns into. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and that's exactly my next point. I think that the new team model, which I've been talking about for years and years and years and years is one where the team is, is primarily focused around uh, building a listing inventory and that mm -hmm. the agents that are on that team, listen closely, are no longer buyer agents. They're servicing the listing inventory. Because what does that mean? That means that these agents are holding open house as a way of marketing the property for buyers to come through with or without agents and doing the showings on behalf of the seller. I think that's a new world too, that more there'll be more responsibility on the listing agent's plate, uh, therefore having bigger operations uh, to manage their listing inventory, writing offers for unrepresented buyers, all of these tasks will be added potentially to the listing side that don't exist today. And that's what I think the new teams will look like. It'll be the teams that have the inventory that really thrive in, in this new market. All right. Now let's talk about buyer agent dependent business models. Okay. So one, I mean, the biggest one is Zillow, right? And, and it'll be interesting yeah. just to kind of see um, what this looks like. I mean, as the news pops, right, their stock price goes down like crazy. And it makes sense. I mean, most of their revenue is driven via referral fees from buyer agent commissions. When mm -hmm. that's at risk, do they pivot? Do they pivot to charging to market your listings? Do they pivot to offering some type of listing service? Do they pivot to offer some type of buyer concierge service? All of these companies like Realtor.com and Referral Exchange and Rocket Homes and all these companies' sole primary revenue source coming via the way of referral fees from selling buyer leads, I think is, is really at risk. It's really mm -hmm. at risk. And if all of these portals, that is their monetization schedule, 
or their their monetization strategy rather that has other downstream impacts what do you ask well think about this ben for a second i want you to just kind of think about this whole this whole uh foundation of this business with the mls and these portals and listing syndication this is what i've been thinking about and i could be totally wrong i just don't know i think that mls's and associations and boards are going to have a very difficult time continuing to add value to a real estate agent. Why? Well, listen how it's this is how it's worked up to this point. You'd get a listing, you'd put it into the MLS. Why did you do that? Well, yeah. you did that to syndicate to all of these different places, including other agents and all these other places. Why? Because th- for the most part, let's be honest, 98, 99% of the time, it was another agent bringing you the buyer for that property. Well, why did that happen? Well, because they had this offer of compensation. Yep. In a world where that's gone, what, what in, 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 in a world where these portals, no longer is it free because the way they were monetizing the, the, the listing was off of buyer agent referral fees. If that becomes more scarce, and the MLS no longer syndicates to these places because they all charge now. And the value of putting in the MLS to market to other agents when other agents aren't even getting compensation in the first place from any listing in the MLS because that's prohibited. Well, what then value does the MLS bring to an agent? If the listing agent is, it's up to them now to market their own listings, right? Because again, the value of the MLS is getting it out to all the agents, getting it to syndicate. Uh, but if all of that value is gone, have you thought about that? Like what value would the MLS bring yeah. to an agent? Absolutely. I was sitting here right before you brought it up and, th- and thinking about the exact same thing. Like, are would you even be required to put it in the MLS? No. Because of the reason that we used to have to was no. for compensation. No. So I, I th- yeah, go ahead. So we, like you look at a, these big companies that it all so before we had everything in one spot, and maybe this is a horrible example, but everything was all in one spot. It was super easy to find. And now it's split. And I'm a big golfer. We look at the PGA Tour. We look at the Live Tour, okay? Everybody, pretty much all the best players in the world played in one spot. Compensation got involved and people started splitting. So now you have these multiple tours that are paying different amounts of money and now like we had just had a great tournament this weekend and not all the best players were in the same spot. So what's my point? My point is all of a sudden, are we gonna have all these different companies and brokers and whatnot that are hosting these listings and not everybody is all in one spot? Meaning now, hey, great tournament this weekend, but in my head, I'm thinking, well, maybe there was a better listing that wasn't here because he's not a part of this. Meaning, do sellers continue to get the highest price without all the inventory easily accessible all in one spot? Because it just that's one hundred percent spot on. That is the biggest downstream impact of this whole thing that I see, and because in the settlement, it's very clear that offer of compensation to a buyer's agent is allowed to be uh, offered on non MLS listings. Okay. I don't know if they hit anybody else in the audience, but here's what I'm thinking. What that then does is it creates new marketplaces that don't exist today. Think mm-hmm. about the brokerages that have massive listing inventory. And they say, okay, well, let's just say I've got 80,000 agents at my company. I can have my own marketplace of our listings and not even put them in the MLS. We'll create our own listing uh, marketing machine where we are able to offer a commission to all of our own agents. That's right. Right? And so that's one thing that I think that could happen or could result of this is, yeah, agents are saying, okay, well, no longer am I required to to join NAR. No longer am I required to do this, that, or the other thing. Uh, The MLS has all these regulations around what I can or can't not do. This is just going to open up a whole new world of how an agent can market properties on market, off market. I think there'll be a lot more of that to be had, which is why I'm so excited. So let me pivot into that. The reason why I'm so excited is 
with any great change comes great opportunity. Most of the people are looking at this as doom and gloom. And as you know, again, this is obviously a huge monumental shift in this industry that has been coming for a long time. And it's here. If you look back, we look back this 30, 40 years from now, we'll say, wow, we are part of that, you know, because yeah. real estate's been done the same way for 100 years, right? So we're part of it right now. The reason why I'm so excited is for the true value creators in this industry, they will flourish under this, this, new, this new world where you can actually bring inventory to a buyer, right? That isn't uh, listed by another agent. That's real value, my friend, real value tangible value. You can list and, and market a property in a way that is just not sticking a sign in the front front yard and throwing in the MLS and sitting back and praying for an offer. That's real tangible value. So for real value creators and different business models that will emerge left and right, you're, you're going to see things move quickly where we're going to serve the consumer. We're still going to con continue to thrive. Real estate agency, real estate agent career path will still be a great career path for those that are true value creators who can innovate, who can adopt, who can hone in their professional skills to serve consumers at a high level because that's the thing that's been at question is what is the value that a realtor brings a consumer? And if we can't clearly articulate that, those that can't do that won't find themselves in this business because of the full transparency that we'll have today. And so I think there'll be more off-market deals. I think that NAR is going to have a lot more competition moving forward. There's already competitors coming up right now, different avenues for agents to be served differently uh, that don't want to be a part of NAR. I think there'll be less agents. We talked about that. There'll be less competition. I think that listing property will remain the name of the game and also become the number one source of lead generation. Why? Because if more and more consumers are going directly to the source, going directly to the listing agent, those people have homes to sell too. So naturally in conversation, it's kind of like new construction, right? These people are mm. coming to the new construction site because that's where the inventory is. And a lot of those people have homes to sell as well that listing agents will find themselves in this opportunity that today they don't have that's going to all the buyer agents, right? That's why a lot of people say, well, I'll buy these buyer leads because through buyer lead generation comes listings. Perhaps that changes moving forward. Hmm. Wow. Yeah. So anyway, those are my thoughts. Um, I think that the other thing, home prices, they will not be affected by this. Home prices simply comes down to supply and demand. That is so, something completely separate. It's completely separate than real estate commissions. Home prices will not be affected by this at all. Um, any last thoughts you want to add? Yeah, I, I just I just come back to um, what this is. And this is an outbound sales career. And yeah. it's a contact sport, right? So I just think that is going to come into play more than ever. Um, and... If that's not something, there, there's going to be lots of different new opportunities within real estate. But ultimately, the leaders in this industry, that will be at the forefront of everything.